So our D grade final now, the race for third place is underway, Natanya Thrift and Jennifer Campbell. And Nat leading it out in the red jersey, Jennifer in the black. hard, but uh, Nat with a commanding lead at this point. Jen's still chasing, but Nat, well clear, and she's not going to get her at this point. So, third is going to go on the way, on paper to Nat, but uh, Jen will get the prize money. Whoa! One yellow A-box skin suit. Laura Parlevleet in the red and white. In qualifying, Jane Road 15.9 and Laura 17.3. So Jane, two, se two seconds quicker in qualifying, but Laura raced a lot better than that and uh, got herself up into second place. So a fairly important race, in particular for Jane at the moment. She's leading the aggregate of one point from Neil Robinson, who's not here today due to a prang at the Bakerets where he uh, did himself some nastiness. So if Jane wins this, she's actually out to pretty close to an almost unassailable lead, depending on how Stephen Ellul goes as well. He's still in the running. So too David Karoknai. So it's going to be quite interesting in the aggregate, the race for the Trevor Watson Trophy. There's only one more round to go after this. And Neil was second by a point, but uh, he's not here today and can't get any points because uh, of a four but due to injury. Unfortunate way, but still there you go. Jane seated acceleration. Laura trying to go around the outside. Laura's got a pretty good jump here. She's going to get the lane. Jane's going to have to chase hard to catch her. She's working hard, stomping on the pedals. Into the headwind up the back straight. Can Jane get around Laura? Can Laura hold her off? Reminiscent of racing Penny Robinson a couple of weeks ago. Jane comes around the outside of Laura. She's going to need to kick hard if she's going to get it because Laura is working very, very hard there in the lead. It's going to be a charge for the finish. It's on here, ladies and gentlemen, but it looks to me like Laura might just hold Jane off. And she does. Laura takes the points. And Jane will have to settle for second and uh, took the points. I think I'm in trouble now. Anyway, <laughs> now we have Dave Thomas and Michelle, Michelle what? Michelle Skirt. Michelle, we're on the outside. David in the black and yellow, black and red of Team Splat. David looks like he's gone early. I already had one. Get drinks for free. On a hold. Michelle off. Michelle now drops down into the draft. Yeah. Oh, she still sits up a little bit higher, doing a little bit more work than she needs to. A little bit of inexperience there. She I'll could probably get a better sit this, after on I David's wheel rather than doing all the work but it's a bit hard to on her own. And David's going to start to lift and pull away. Okay, let's have a nice start this one. <laughs> That's awkward. I see you, baby. Shake it at ass. <laughs> Johnny Lewis in the white, Nicole on the yellow steel Perkins frame, a beautiful bicycle made for her by Daryl Perkins. Ducking and diving behind John, both these riders very experienced on this track. And Nicole coming back after she's been off teaching in the Northern Territory for a while. John, pretty much a stalwart of the series, he's been with us since about the second year. And Nicole raced with us in the early days as well, and then as I say she went off to uh, teach. Uh, the desert somewhere or the jungle or somewhere like that. <laughs> Dude, this is the end of the summer. Certainly a hell of a long way from here, but uh, by happy coincidence, she's been back in time and she's made a bit of a move down the inside, but John covering it straight down in the lane. Nicole with the chase to do with the bell lap. 
Oh, lack of we just rang the bell, didn't we? Oh, there's the bell. Got me last time. I think both of these guys know anyway. Nicole chasing John Hart down the back straight. John having to work into the headwind. You can see Nicole with that extra speed as she runs into the draft. Can John hold her off? This is for first place in C grade and then envelope. And aggregate points. And Nicole coming very fast around the outside, but Johnny Lewis in the end takes that by about a bike. And again, that flying 200 to White. If he breaks with Collingwood, he's got at least two teeth. Maybe three. And Callum in the black Blackburn kit. Callum so far has made a habit of going early and jumping. He's got a pretty decent early kick. He's done a lot of points races. And he's a dangerous rider to ride against because he's never quite sure what he's going to do. He's very unpredictable. So he's a challenging rider to race against. But David Harsey, no novice. His uh, comeback is going along very well after a long layoff out of the sport. I'm taking height, David. Just matching it. Callum making a jump. It's much more of a conventional race this time than we've seen in the past from Callum where he's jumped hard early. Callum trying to make a move around the outside. A little bit of a hook there from Haas. We'll uh, remain to see if we'll have a video of that later and we'll be able to see if, in fact, he left the lane once the sprint had started. A little hard to tell because you may have not been in the lane at the time. I certainly wasn't watching closely enough myself. Very close as they come around that bend. Yeah. Haas making a charge for line. Callum trying to get around the outside. Looks like Haas down the inside. Yep, not to lope. Now the race for first place in B grade it is, I think. Yes, B grade. And we have Nick Mark and Chris Dan. Nick in the A-Bot, Chris in the Blackburn kit. At least I think it's Blackburn jersey. Nick will be pretty keen to win this one. He was uh, complaining this morning that he wasn't feeling too good and he was going to scratch, but Dino yelled at both of us and we still raced. I raced badly, Nick raced pretty well. At the moment, riders prepared to uh, cruise around at a reasonably relaxed pace. Nick still with the inside running, keeping Chris jammed up, not giving him much opportunity to duck underneath, but now that opportunity opens up if Chris wants it. Seems as though at this point in time he's content to stay high and just sit in Nick's draft. Bell rings. 307 metres to go as they cross that finish line. Nick's still holding Chris high. Watch for a hook and drop. Is that going to happen? Yep. There it is. Straight out of the playbook. And Chris alert to it. He's done this a lot of training. Chris trying to come around the outside of Nick. They were pretty close together in qualifying. Chris is going to have to go a long way. Nick's got the advantage of the inside running. And you can see him just starting to stretch it out now as he comes around the bend. He's got to stay in the lane, and he does. Chris drops in behind and concedes that one. And Nick Mark will take B grade. Very good race from Chris. Looks like David's drawn the lead. Luke in the yellow. David in the blue and yellow of Carnegie. Luke in the light, in the yellow and light blue of uh, Harding Cycles from uh, Bendigo. David looking like he wants a slow race. Got a pretty good jump on him. It'll be an interesting one to see if Luke decides that he wants to play the same game or if he wants to mix it up a little bit. At the moment, David tempting Luke to go underneath him and take the lead. Maybe he wants to be let out. Luke not having a bar of that, says no thanks. You can lead it into the headwind sunshine, I don't want it. So we're going to roll around slowly around through turn three, turn four. We'll come around to get the bell. Neither rider at this point seeming to want the pace high. So it's going to come down to who can jump. David ducking down onto the duckboards. They get the bell, still no move. David's still watching Luke. No move happening yet. It's going to come down to the snap. Who's going to do it? It's a bit of a game of chicken. David jumps out of the saddle but hasn't accelerated. He's just priming himself. Luke starts to wind it, but David responds. And now it's on. More of a wind than an outright jump there. Luke trying to make a move around the outside if he can get around David, but David kicking clear. And the sprint down to the finish. 
David's got to stay down in the lane and he does quite nicely, but oh, David Crocknoy takes that one by a smidge. So David to Luke, David, and a national talent ID. We'll see how this one pans out. Stephen certainly with some pretty good form today. Gary will be very aware of that. Stephen's won through pretty cleanly and ridden the fastest flying 200 of the day. But again, very, very little in it between them. Stephen Rowe 12.507 and Gary 12.515. So only eight thousandths of a second between these two in qualifying, and that's not even a blink of an eye. So on paper and in speed, these two as close to exactly the same time as you can get. Certainly by hand timing, they'd be the same time. It's only because Star Trek built us the Uber system that we can tell the difference between the two. Gary jamming Stephen up high. Looks like he wants to rely on the jump. Stephen looking to try and get out believe it, below him and push and shove. Certainly we saw some push and shove earlier between Connor and, and uh, Steve. Gary still holding Steve high. Wants to keep it short and sharp. Looks like he wants to own the lane and force Steve to come around him. And that's not a bad tactic on this track. It's hard to pass. It's on now, the two side by side. Stephen trying to do a little bit of a break up and run as he comes down and uh, go Gary takes the lane, Steve's got to go the long way around and that's going to be a struggle. They come a little close there but uh, Gary has the lane and owns it well. And at my mind at the moment, Gary's going to take this one out. Stephen's not going to be able to make the distance around the outside. Gary Ramshaw wins A grade, Summer Sprint Series round four.